Uh, Sylvie, you were a farmer. Yeah, uh, once. I was. What brought you to farming? Uh huh. Uh, what what kind of farming did you do? Mm -hmm. What were your experiences, and how do you relate um, that experience to kind of what you know now about kind of the the ecology and the biology of farming? Yeah. Uh, thank you for the questions. Um, I found organic farming in college. I went to a little liberal arts school in the middle of Iowa. I. Um, I had always been interested in ethical living, or how do we live in right relationship? I came from a Lutheran background. This is something that was always kind of in my in the ether around me. Mm -hmm. When I got to college, I started thinking that um, economics or sustainable economics was a way that I could have. Uh, there could be a, a tangible way to live out these right relationships. These um, to live out justice. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I found farming, like so many things just fell into place. It was being outside, it was ecology, it was biology, it was business, it was communication, it was um, delivering CSA shares to... So at my first farm, I went for an internship to this farm in Northeast Iowa uh, the year after I graduated college. Um, loved it. Um, ended up becoming co-owner there mm -hmm. and worked there for eight years, or co-owned it for eight years. Um, we did CSA. We grew uh, a wide variety of vegetables, probably at least 30, maybe 40 different crops every year and then different varieties within that. Um, we did home delivery to our rural wow. area in Northeast Iowa, the northeasternmost county, Allen yeah. Key County, you can yeah. find that. There's one stoplight in the county that runs half the time. Uh, that's very the, rural. Very rural. Um, and this four, is this would have been in a place where the concept of a CSA yeah. might have been not all that familiar to Pretty people new. too. Yeah. Um, my former partner came to that farm a few years before I got there, mm -hmm. um, and he really introduced the concept to that region. Uh -huh. um, Wow, so my experiences. Um, it was so satisfying to have personal connections with customers. Um, it was really satisfying to feed people. Um, mm -hmm. Our farm staff oftentimes really felt like a family. Mm -hmm. um, it, that was really satisfying work. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't make enough money. Um, we made, <laughs> we wanted so much for our food to be available, mm -hmm. accessible to a broad swath of our community, which really wasn't, it was not a high un income place. Yeah. Right. Um, that we didn't charge enough mm. and we really didn't value the time that we needed to regenerate as our own human organisms. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we, we burned out financial and financially and we burned out um, mm. personally, mm -hmm. um, yeah. which is really difficult and not a unique situation in the organic farming world. I think people are talking more about it now, about how uh, how one creates a business plan that um, both brings great food into a community and sustains the farmers, but it's still not easy. Um, I guess what I would say for, for people wondering, yeah. should I become a farmer? Um, is I you know first try it like <laughs> do some internships ideally yeah. more than one get yeah. get a feel for how different people do things yeah. like what your options are um, and then when you make the business plan have realistic expectations of yourself your land and your customers mm -hmm. like just because you think something's an awesome idea does not mean <laughs> enough people are going to also think that, that they're willing to pay what you need we have very unequally distributed distributed income in this country and not everybody can afford to pay more for food than the commodity system charges. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, boy, if I had all the answers to it, um, I think it's really important for people to keep trying things. Yeah. Keep, keep, um, you know, don't, don't stop doing regenerative farming because not every single person can afford the food. Mm -hmm. And also think beyond the paradigm of um, growing food organically or in a direct marketing way has to exclude a portion of people. Mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of folks thinking more creatively about that. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's be clear about what your goals are. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I mean, yeah. <laughs> there are people who can speak to that better because they're doing it or really mm -hmm. making e efforts to like, um, yeah. 
right get 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 beyond the yeah. um, organic food has to be expensive yeah. paradigm yeah so I came back to graduate school when I was 35 years old I had farmed for eight years after my undergraduate degree um, and then I went to work for a seed company uh, just started answering phones there yeah. uh, during their winter season uh, eventually I became their organic product manager, mm -hmm. which meant I got to source seeds mm -hmm. for organic farmers, and I got to know the seed industry mm -hmm. and the organic seed community. And um, I went to a student organic seed symposium, an organic seed school one day, when I was an organic product manager, um, where I got to walk around the field with organic plant breeders, um, like Bill Tracy, who was here at the UW, and John Navazio, who, um, who was here also uh, and worked on beets. Um, and that was, that was the first time that I realized, like, if I understand reproductive biology and I understand some principles of selection and statistics, um, like, I could do this. I could mm -hmm. actually breed plants. Mm -hmm. um, like, I had been observing the variation among varieties for a dozen years mm -hmm. as a farmer and then selling varieties to people. But to know that I could actually be part of that mm -hmm. was like such a revelation. And then I came here and got to know Irwin and decided to do a degree and I'm 41 now. Um, <laughs> so this is, an, this is a non-traditional path. Um, but it's been such an incredible opportunity and um, plant breeding and seed growing. Like mm -hmm. Seed growing is a part of farming that a lot of people don't even think about. Mm -hmm. Like you buy your seeds from a catalog or, or from you know the, the elevator or mm -hmm. whatever. Um, but seed growing, seed growing is farming too. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So many research positions, like yeah. places like universities or private yeah. foundations, who can do research that's too high risk for mm -hmm. farmers to do because mm -hmm. they would have to invest in infrastructure without knowing if it would work. Mm -hmm. um, that's really valuable. Um, our choices have a lot of impacts globally. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's really it's an extra big opportunity to get beyond. Uh, organic equals good, or organic equals bad, or um, non-GMO equals good, or like that, that kind of dualistic yes, no. Um, there's not a lot of space to grow there. Um, but when you start asking questions about like, what does it mean to be organic? Like what, what is the spectrum of practices that are encompassed under organic? And how does that relate to, um, like does it, does it make a difference for my nutrition? Does it make a difference more for the way uh, money is distributed within communities? And what's the difference between, between buying uh, organic from a multinational corporation versus from um, a farmer, the farmer's market? Like how are those, how do those, how are those different? How do I, how do those feel different? Do I feel different? Mm -hmm. um, does it, how does it impact my life? Mm -hmm. um, and how does it impact the lives of people around me? Like those are rich questions, and we can spend, we will spend our lifetimes ask, answering them. <laughs> and that's what we spent this class actually yeah. going over. This is fantastic. I'm going to stop there because I could literally go go on. All this the is, this is really fun.